what is up guys welcome to vintage genetics where it is all about classic bodybuilding and today is a wednesday and this sunday is going to be my classic physique pro show in poland so today i'm actually doing a fat loading phase i did one yesterday as well the weight is around 110.3 kilo, so I have a nice room to load. So I'm starting with a fat load. Let me show you exactly what that is about. So this is part one of the breakfast. So we have three whole eggs, a little bit of spring onion, a little bit of salt, but that already adds fat to this meal that I didn't add the whole prep. So the only fats I added to this meal was a bit of chocolate, dark chocolate, 80% to my cream of rice, which is right here. Instead of the 15 grams of dark chocolate, now it's 30 grams. So we improved and increased the amount of fat. And trust me, I'm not carb loading. I simply made this uh, a lot of volume, voluminous by you know using liquid egg whites, using uh, egg white powder, uh, some whey isolate, uh, psyllium husk, just a little bit of each of those ingredients, but only 30 grams of cream of rice. So this is the first meal of the day, the breakfast. Always add a little bit of carbs in there, including this beautiful kiwi, of course. And after this, I'm going to be training and explaining also in this video to you why fat loading can be very beneficial before starting the carb load. Yeah. All right, guys, we have arrived at the sports center or sportcentrum van Drunen. And this is where my brother always trains and where I used to train for at least seven years straight at the beginning of my career. So I always like to go here, very extensive gym. And uh, what we're doing today is chest. So you just saw the uh, breakfast I had were fat loading. So even when I'm fat loading and you're training, you don't increase the carbs unnecessarily because now you're loading the fat. So we're going to do chest today. Nothing too extreme because I don't want to fatigue the muscle. I don't want to create muscle ache. We're just going to get blood in the muscle. And the first movement is going to be the chest press. So let's go. So, yes guys, this workout is all about getting blood in the muscle, making it easier to replete glycogen in the muscle because I've been depleting carbs for actually quite a while. And the only thing I'm doing different now is adding fats to the diet, but no carbs yet. So I can further deplete the carb stores within the muscle if it's not completely depleted anyway. And the fats throughout the day will fill up the cell membranes or the intra uh, muscular triglycerides. You do that by fat loading for at least two to three days. I'm just doing it for two days just to see uh, what it'll do to my physique. And I don't want to gain too much weight from the fat loading. Literature states actually from July 221. So this year, only a little bit more than a month ago, uh, the latest research states you can gain up to 0, 0 0.6 percent of lean body mass of fullness basically using only fat so that's what i'm trying to do and as i mentioned i only weigh 110 kilos in the morning so we'll see what i weigh uh tomorrow morning which of course i will let you guys know and from then we'll do the carb load and uh, doing some workouts beforehand gives you a super compensation effect and that means it allows you to store more carbs than you could have if you didn't train or deplete your carbohydrates that is the super compensation effect the body has naturally because it notices oh there was a big long period that it did not get my carbs in so better store them for the next period in case it happens again so whenever you do then get carbs your body will store more than it usually would but anyway this is the first exercise just a very simple machine exercise so we're sticking to very simple movements today but it's still very useful even in an off-season scenario the only thing you have to do is add some more working sets and lower the reps here and there to be able to go even heavier but honestly even on this machine i'm still doing the full stack of around 15 plus reps but the execution here must be perfect so that is vital you don't want to cause any injury 
or just little niggles here and there in the muscle. You don't want any pain at all, especially now, you know, most professional bodybuilders who've been doing this for a while, they make sure that their estrogen is very low near the end of a contest prep because estrogen uh, causes water retention and what you're trying to do is limit water retention so you look as lean as possible and you do that by manipulating estrogen for example and a lot of bodybuilders do this and actually still train super hard and they get joint issues tendon issues or even muscle tears because estrogen largely also controls the tendon strength and is simply a very healthy hormone to have but there's nothing really that healthy about the last few weeks of a contest prep so what you want to do is be as careful as possible eat as healthy as possible supplement with as many healthy supplements as you can and then simply cruise into the show with the best health in mind you know or the least destructive health in mind with the best possible shape and one important factor to keep in mind is how you feel if you feel really bad and you feel pain here and there you can be rest assured injury is lurking around the corner and that is not what we want Okay guys, next exercise. So the first one was just a regular chest press to get warmed up. Two working sets, maybe I'll do two or one here depending on how I feel. But it's all about getting the blood in the muscle without causing fatigue in the muscle because fatigue brings with it inflammation. Inflammation brings with it water under the skin and that's not what we want. We want to maximize the pump in the muscles and maintain the fullness. So let's do this incline chest press now. So as you're seeing, I'm training with my brother Kane. He's exactly one and a half years younger than me, but we've always trained for the first seven years, at least of my bodybuilding career. We always trained together. His strength was on par with mine. His growth was on par with mine. That was an amazing time. But of course, as you both grow up, you start getting together with your girlfriend and you move away from each other depending on where you decide to live, of course. So now we at least want to train twice a week together. So one time I'll be at this gym and the other time he will come to 100% fit gym, which is our gym, me and my girlfriend. So that'll be very amazing. So we'll be seeing him more on the Vintage Genetics channel. And by the way, we are both wearing the oversized Vintage Genetics tee available on Vintage genetics.com and Kane himself is also very busy with the company sending out shipments you know doing the packaging stuff like that along with my mom who's actually filming this very video so it's just a very incredibly amazing to have a family like that who is just supportive and who just wants to make things rule in a good way so this is one of my favorite movements of the chest in this entire gym I've literally been doing this exercise for the first day that I've ever done a chest workout. I've done this exercise, this literal exact machine. So I know exactly what I need to feel, how it should feel. And here, without a shirt on, you can actually see uh, what is supposed to happen in the chest when you're doing this movement. So what you want to see is the stretch at the very bottom. So you want to see those striations, if you're lean enough, you want to see those striations being creased into the chest but also when you're going upwards and you're contracting the chest very hard at the top you want to see the striations uh, creasing in the chest there especially on the inside so here you can see that the inclined version really does target the upper chest and you really also want to feel that mind muscle connection in the chest because if you don't then something is going wrong so in terms of the variety of exercises today, all I'm trying to aim for is hit the chest from many different angles. And I don't like to train shoulders separately, otherwise you could call this a push workout. But my push workouts only consists of chest, a little bit of side delts and some triceps, which I've been doing for many years because the front delts are already developed enough. Okay guys, just finished the incline chest press and it felt quite amazing. As you can see, the pump is starting to come and uh, that's what it's all about, getting blood in there without going excessively heavy. So no reps, no sets under eight, just all at least above 10, around 10 to 15. We're gonna do the same here. 
another type of chest press, the decline or wide grip chest press. Let's do it. So now we're doing another chest press, as I mentioned, and regardless of how warmed up you think you are, if you do a new exercise, especially at this part in the prep, always properly warm up, no matter how strong you think you feel. What point does it have? What point is it? to risk injuring yourself near the end of prep. And I'm, I keep repeating this, but uh, it's very important to keep in mind that, you know, even though you might still be strong near the end, you simply don't have many reserves left. So you might look strong, you might get a good pump, but uh, one little mistake is around the corner whenever you do something wrong. So that's why I always like to preach full range of motion throughout the entire off season proper supplementation, for example, with curcumin or with omega-3 fish oil and simply having a healthy diet with uh, plenty of collagen types in there as well, such as fish, but also some chicken and beef, you know, uh, making sure to have the right balance between all of those types of protein to make sure that your body has all the raw materials to build up anything that was destroyed during a training, not just muscle, but also tendons and joints, for example, because right now I don't feel any pain anywhere at all, which is very rare for me near the end of a contest prep. Usually, you know, in the off season, you might feel a little niggle here and there, and it will only exacerbate throughout the uh, a contest prep because you simply don't have the reserves or the calories to recover just as well compared to the off season. And that's where you have to lower the volume, for example, in order to give your body the chance to recover. But enough about that, this is about the workout. So the weights I'm using are relatively light because on some exercises, for example, this one, a couple of months ago, I also did this exercise with at least two more plates on each side. But right now I'm really focusing on only feeling the chest, not letting any other muscle help at all. So just focus on the chest and whenever the chest starts to hit failure, that's when I stop. So no force reps, no reps beyond failure because that, as I mentioned before, only damages the muscle up to a point where inflammation is being caused, which might not be resolved near the end of this week. And at the end of the week, that's when the contest is and you want to be fresh. So the mistake people make is even in the peak week, they want to drive their body into the ground trying to get some more leanness, trying to burn some more fat, getting rid of some more water, training as hard as they can, still doing a lot of cardio, reducing carbs. All it will do will bring stress, inflammation, water retention. Yeah, you may burn a little fat in the meantime, but that will be invisible because your body simply won't look as fresh as it could. And what we are both also wearing is the new vintage uh, Stringer line. So we have a Stay Golden line, but also a vintage line in several colors such as maroon, purple, hunter green, black and yellow as I'm wearing right here. So thank you very much for the incredible support we've had at the beginning of this launch. Okay, the next one for chest is going to be a dip exercise. And keep in mind, we're not doing flies because the stretch there is so extreme and that causes the most muscle damage. We're not here to damage the muscle too much. We are here to work the muscle, maintain fullness, get some blood in there to make sure that tomorrow with the carb loading is going to be easier to get the blood where it needs to go. Let's do this. Okay, so this will be the last chest movement. So as I said, no flies, you don't want to damage the muscle unnecessarily, and it doesn't serve much of a purpose unless you're doing the flies with half range of motion, but I don't like to do that. So we are doing some dips here, and I really like it because I get a very good mind-muscle connection. And if you look at my body, and this is very important if you're doing the dips on a dip machine like this, the difference between a dip machine 
and doing the dips with your own body weight is that a machine allows for a bit more freedom in the uh, way that the chest is being involved in the movement. So when my arms are going up, I lean forward, stretching the chest fibers as much as possible up to a safe point because you don't want to feel the front delts. And when I push down, I actually lean back allowing me to more easily contract the chest so usually you can only reach a good stretch with the dips but with a dip machine you can actually achieve a stretch and a contraction by rocking your body back and forth along with the movement of the dip itself and that is great okay guys we finished the chest and now it's time for the side dumbbell level raise Whenever I train the chest, I like to do the shoulders as well. Not the front delts because those are already trained, but now the side delts to finish them off, to fill them up with blood. Let's do this. So I pretty much never skip a chest workout without doing some side lateral raises, usually with a dumbbell. So I've made a minor adjustment in the way I execute this exercise. And I actually have the hypertrophy coach to thank for it. I always had a great mind muscle connection doing these side lateral raises, which is why my side delts are quite developed anyway. But whenever you can improve the form, you should. So he was talking about keeping, uh, you know, pointing your pinky to the ceiling whenever you're doing this exercise. But instead of doing something awkward like that, you might as well lean forward just a little bit in order to achieve the same tension on the side delt. So what you want to do, instead of standing up entirely straight, which I'm almost am, but not entirely, you might want to lean forward just a little bit so you can actually hit those side delts more in an isolated way. Keep in mind, the more that you isolate a muscle, the less weight you're able to, you know, execute with the exercise. So a lot of people do 20 kilo side lateral raises, but guess what they're using? The traps, even maybe the arms to do this exercise. What I'm aiming to do is doing it purely with the side delts. And whenever I fail on this movement, the only muscle I feel the lactic acid burn in is the side delts and not the traps. Now the traps are pretty much attached to this movement anyway. So they will be doing some work as you can see, especially when you're lean, but that's not where I feel anything, I actually feel it in the side delt. And that is where mind muscle connection comes in. You have to feel where you're working the muscle. Okay guys, we just did the side delts, nothing too crazy, but the same thing as always, two sets to failure with high volume, at least 20 to 25 reps. And now it's time to finish off the workout with triceps. And the first movement is going to be the tricep push down with the rope. One of my favorite ones because first it warms up the triceps really well. You can get a full range of motion where you both feel the stretch and the contraction. So let's do this. Tricep time and we're sticking to easy movements once again. So of course always doing some warm ups on every single exercise. And by the way, I have been doing, you know, I didn't show all the warm ups or I didn't even show all the working sets. But for most exercises, I just did two working sets and about three warm ups before uh, executing a first working set. So just a very simple, basic workout that, we're, that we've been doing here, but it just works. So whenever I'm starting the off season and I start my new workout schedule, I start with you know, doing it that way and then slowly increasing volume, slowly increasing intensity by adding intensity techniques, for example. And of course, when me and Kane are together, we have to get some poses in because we're not uh, you know, together as much as in the past. So doing some comparisons and, uh, you know, getting some motivational blood flowing in the muscles is always a good thing for sure. He also has his own goals, which we'll make a series about on this YouTube channel. You know, and if you guys are interested, let me know in the comment section to see and follow him because he also comes from a slightly different background compared to me because I'm of course now deep into the professional bodybuilding world, but Kane is changing his shape for other reasons, obviously. So that's going to be an amazing story as well. 
So this is the working set for the rope tricep pushdown, uh, all with slightly higher reps than usual, at least 15 plus reps to get a lot of blood where it needs to go. Last exercise of the day, an overhead tricep extension. So we first did the regular one to pump up the triceps and now it's time to stretch it out. So the long head is being targeted here, which is the head right here. And that is going to be the final exercise for the triceps to make sure enough blood is in there. Let's do this. So, after doing some rope pushdowns, it is time for some overhead rope extensions. So again, using the exact same rope here, we're simply doing a very easy movement. And as I mentioned, the rope pushdown, that is for the entirety of the tricep, but mostly the small head, it's always an emphasis. And this overhead extension is more for the lower, <laughs> I mean, the, at the lower head, when you're doing a frontable bicep, the sweep on the triceps that you see is actually, that's the long head of the tricep, which can never be big enough, literally. It is two thirds of the arm, the triceps, and the long head is the biggest part of those two thirds. So you want to make that as big as possible. And that is also one of the reasons, for example, that uh, Ronnie Coleman had such a great frontable bicep and such a great arm in general because his triceps were absolutely huge. Of course, he had incredible uh, biceps as well, but his triceps gave him that incredible mass, even in the side chest, for example. And he had a smaller, uh, small head with the triceps because in the side triceps, his arm actually didn't look as big. So you always want to have a balance in between all heads of the triceps. And here we are doing the final working set for the overhead rope pushdown, I mean extension. So whenever you guys, you think you have weaker triceps, just make sure to pick, and I'm only doing two exercises here, but pick three exercises that you have the best connection with and make sure to get as strong as you can on all of those movements with perfect full range of motion form. So only pick movements where you can feel the stretch and the contraction. If you don't, then you could get stronger, but you don't actually know which muscles are helping you getting stronger. It has to be the triceps, and that is the key to growth of not only the triceps, but also the rest of your muscles. Okay, so this is at the very end of the workout after doing the chest, side delts and triceps. And this is something interesting because I usually don't show this. And the reason why I don't show this is because I didn't train abs pretty much at all for at least two years. Because I was one of those guys who thought, well, you're always going to have your abs because when you're doing compound movements for legs like a hack squat or even you know any squat at all, uh, you will contract the core, you will use the abs and they will be there anyway. And when you get lean enough, you will always see the definition there. But I noticed at the Portugal Pro, and I also said this in my review of the show itself, that my abs were actually starting to fade in the thickness and the definition. So what I'm doing now, and I've been doing this ever since the day that I got home, in between Portugal and the show I'm about to do is some crunches like this. However, they're not normal crunches, so I'm not doing any weighted crunches at all. Sometimes I put a two and a half kilo dumbbell behind my head to make it a little more challenging. But what I'm basically doing here and what I just explained in the video itself, but that was in Dutch, is that you want to contract the abs without your abs going outward. So you can see where the belly button is. Uh, some people actually, when they do an ab crunch, and you can see it with Kai Green, for example, their abs are to bulge outwards. And that's the weakness of the transverse abdominis, which is normally uh, causing your stomach to be tucked in and allows you to do a vacuum, for example. If you don't have any strength there, you can't hold in your stomach, which causes partly the bubble guts. And Kai Green, yeah. you know, of course, I am very admiring of his work, dedication, his incredibly amount of muscle mass, which I'll never achieve in my entire life. But his midsection, part of why it's a little wider, is a loss of the transverse abdominis control. And what I'm doing here is some vacuum exercises. Okay guys, it's time for the post-workout meal. Already had my whey isolate shake by Jacked Factory. And now it is time for this meal. So we are fat loading. 
So the only meal of the day that also has a little bit of carbs is this meal, only 30 grams of rice, so it's basically negligible. But it's been proven that after a workout, the carbs you take won't be stored as fat in the fat cells, but more used by the muscle. So this is two salmon fillets, in total about 250 grams of Nordic salmon, which adds the fat. And we also have some vegetables, some pumpkin, and some zucchini. And we're also adding Himalayan pink salt and drinking a liter of water with it because we're drinking 11 liters of water today. So yeah, let's enjoy this meal. Alrighty, just got home. So now we are one day out, as I said before. As you can see, some of the suitcases are already being packed. But it's time for meal number three, so let's check it out. As I mentioned, we are fat loading today with as little carbs as possible, you know, no other carbs uh, that you need are going to be in this diet. So the next two meals will also look exactly like this. So we just have two salmon fillets right here. This was already sous vide, so that's why it looks a little weird, but trust me, it's delicious. And we also have some lettuce, some spinach, a little bit of shrimp to bump up the protein a little bit more. We have some uh, zucchini, cucumber, uh, squash or pumpkin, whatever you want to call it, some salt and pepper, and that's it. So it's a very low carb, high fat, low fiber, high micronutrient meal. And that will be all the meals of the day. And the last one of the day will actually be the same as the first meal. So very easy, clean, nothing can go wrong and i already look better today compared to yesterday yesterday i actually weighed 109.8 and now 110.2 or 3 so a little bit of gain in the triglyceride loading of the cell membrane so intramuscular triglycerides imt are now being loaded and after that we're gonna load the glycogen stores but anyway let's enjoy okay guys so i just finished that meal and it was Bullissimo delicioso. <laughs> but yes, we have three more meals, just like the ones you've already seen today. So that's not really interesting. This video is already going to take quite long with the workout and such. I'll be uh, recording as much as possible in Poland, because tomorrow afternoon we're flying there. And uh, of course I bring my laptop, so anybody who has any workout plans, nutrition plans, coaching, I'll still be available. Uh, mostly via email and uh, Facebook Messenger as well. But anyway, thank you a whole lot for watching. And uh, all questions you have, ask them down below. And I might do a Q&A as well, because those videos are nice and easy to upload. And uh, again, thank you an incredibly much for the support, especially for purchasing Vintage Genetics clothing, for example, that literally allows me and my girlfriend to invest in doing these competitions you know because for classic physique the prize money even if you win all the shows won't cover you know flying over there the preparations for the show itself the hotel or airbnb the car you have to rent etc etc so thank you very much from the bottom of my heart it's amazing we as a family are very you know passionate about you know the clothing company and a lot more to you is coming guys so vintagenx.com if you're interested and uh don't forget guys to stay golden